I am a sucker for any game that looks like it would sit comfortably in a Saturday morning cartoon lineup. So when I first saw the trailer for The Plucky Squire back in 2022, I was locked in. It's a lightweight action adventure where you play as a storybook character who discovers they have the power to leave their book and explore the real world outside of their story's pages. After spending 10 or so hours adventuring through whimsical fantasy lands, platforming my way around an obstacle course on a giant desk, and hopping between the game's 2D and 3D realms, The Plucky Squire has quickly become one of the most charming and inventive games of 2024. It almost makes me wish I had the power to jump through my screen right into its world. You play as the jovial Jot, an adventurer and wordsmith complete with sword and quill. Jot is accompanied by his two storybook friends as they try and stop the evil Humgrump, a wizard who has peeked at the end of the story and discovered that he will be defeated and by Jot nonetheless. Wanting to rewrite the ending, Humgrump uses his magic to physically push Jot through the pages of the book and out into the real world. Discovering he can now jump between 2D and 3D realms, Jot uses his power to bring down Humgrump and become the rightful hero of his own tale. During his adventure, Jot faces many challenges as he traverses through the pages of his book, involving both his quill and his sword. Combat is simplified to a handful of attacks that focus on cartoony charm, like how the words BAP and THWACK will pop up whenever you whack an enemy on the noggin. Smacking trees and picking up dropped loot will give you light bulbs, a currency you can use to upgrade your moveset and gain new abilities. But unsurprisingly, combat isn't a major focus here. Enemies are sprinkled around an ever-changing environment, from the cutesy brigade of angry bugs in a storybook swamp to actual bugs in a real 3D world. There are platforming elements too. In the 2D space, these take the form of side-scrolling sections, but platforming plays more of a role in the 3D realm. A highlight for me was navigating a giant doll's house, switching between 2D and 3D as I jumped through scribbled doodles and post-it notes to get to the very top. Plucky Squire's puzzles also make great use of this realm hopping too. You'll often need to get items from the real world to help you in the storybook, or you can use your power to hop out of the book and make your way around to a part of the map that you couldn't get to in your 2D form. But a big surprise for me was the handful of word-based puzzles you come up against. You can take words from the book's written story and move them about, and as you change the words in the sentence, the environment changes to match the descriptions. So a broken bridge needs to become a solid bridge, for example. An inventive twist on these word searching puzzles is that you'll often need to leave the book, physically turn its pages and fetch words from other sections to complete puzzles. There's a wonderful plainness with the physical object of the book and I just really love how it's implemented here. Puzzles in combat may be a little too straightforward for some players, but the way everything is presented keeps the game from feeling stagnant. The 3D realm is nice, uh, but it's the 2D realm where Pucky Squire truly shines. The animation is bursting with personality and colour, and the pleasantly rounded designs of the characters and the world are just such a lovely style choice. I fell in love with one town in particular that was inspired by paintings and artwork, where real world artists had been shrunk down and chibified. Like look at this tiny Yayoi Kusama, she is adorable! Devolver Digital, get started on a Plucky Squire art book, please. I also have to give props to the charismatic narrator who emphasises the fantasy fairy tale storybook vibe. Like, they really should think about doing audiobooks. Another part of Jot's realm hopping power is that he can delve into other 2D objects. One moment you might be fighting an elf warrior in a Magic the Gathering style playing card, or jumping onto the side of a lampshade to take part in a space shootout. It's so playful and inventive with Jot's power, there are endless ideas and a constant string of fun surprises, like taking part in a Punch-Out style minigame where you get to deck a honey badger in the face. It's all a breezy affair, but there are some little frustrating annoyances. These tend to crop up when the game introduces a specific area-themed mechanic, like this finicky bow minigame, or having to awkwardly place this bounce mat correctly, or the strange mapping of these beetle enemies. They're part of the gameplay that gets taken away when you move to a different area, making them few and far between, but it's still annoying as the rest of the game plays wonderfully. I played both on PC with an Xbox controller and on Steam Deck and they worked a treat. I couldn't recommend the deck enough for playing, it's perfection.
But regardless of all these little tidbits, the plucky squire is bursting with charm and is fun from beginning to end. It has a childish sensibility that may make it look like it's appealing to a younger audience, but I think anyone would enjoy this whimsical adventure. It reminds me of games like It Takes Two or Tiny Kid, the type of games where they keep switching up their playstyle and feel endlessly creative. So much love and attention has been poured into every single corner of this game, making it just a joy to play. The Plucky Squire is available now on PC, PS5, Xbox Series S and X, and the Nintendo Switch.